If you have ever uh, tried uh, to use the inverse functions of cosine and sine on your calculator, you might have come across the following problem. Your calculator gave you an answer, but then that answer was not the correct answer. So what is going on here? Is your calculator lying to you? No, the calculator is not lying to you. What happens with the inverse cosine and sine function is that the calculator only gives you one solution. However, there are multiple solutions and that one solution maybe, depending on the problem, is not the one solution you're looking for in the problem. Let me give you an example. So let's say you have the following problem. You are given a function of the form x as a function of time is 3 times cosine of 0.1t plus pi. In physics, uh, this could be uh, the equation of a simple harmonic motion. And the question is the following. At what time bigger than zero is x equals 2.5? So you might have started solving this thinking, okay, this is easy. So all I have to do is I have to plug in, right? 2.5 is equal to 3 times cosine 0.1t plus pi. Then you went on and you uh, solved uh, for your time. So we did 2.5. 5 over 3 is cosine of 0.1t uh, plus pi. And then you know if you want to do the inverse of cosine, you have to do the arc cosine on the other side. So we have uh, arc cosine 2.5 over 3 is 0.1t uh, plus pi. Now, after hours of looking for the R course button on your calculator, you have finally figured out that uh, this one is actually labeled cosine uh, minus one. And then you type this in, and what the calculator will tell you that uh, the inverse cosine of two five over three is, uh, the calculator will tell you that uh, this is 0 0.585. Uh, uh, which you said equal to 0 0.1 times time plus pi. Uh, so you solve this for time, you subtract pi, you divide by 0 0.1, and what you get is time is equal to uh, minus 26-ish seconds. Now you submit that to your teacher, and your teacher goes, uh, this is wrong because I want the t is bigger than zero. So what is going on here and how can we solve this? Now, what you have to realize first is uh, by uh, asking the calculator to give you uh, the cosine inverse function of 2.5 over 3, you're actually asking the calculator for which angle, if I do cosine of that angle, will I get 2.5 over 3? 2.5 over 3, if you don't really like this, that's by the way, that is equal to 0. 0.83. So the cosine function uh, looks as following. If we plot cosine of an angle theta as a function of theta, it will start at 1, go down to 0, come back to 1, and so on, and it will also extend on the left side. Now, what you're basically asking your calculator by typing this one here is, okay, so for what angle do I get 0 0.83? So 0 0.83 is about here. Now, before we had calculators, what people had, they actually had printouts of the cosine function. They would put the ruler down here, and then they would immediately see, oh, look, I have multiple solutions. I have one here, I have one here, I have one here. Now your calculator, however, he keeps things simple. It will not give you all the solution. All the calculator does, it gives you the solution between here and here. What the calculator just gave you was that uh, we're going to get one solution, which is theta 1. 
which is uh, in this case 0 0.585 rats because I had set my calculator uh, to radians so he spit me out the answer in radians. If you put it in degrees the calculator of course will give you the answer in degrees but the problem here is exactly the same you will only get one angle but there are several possible solutions. So now how do we get the other solutions? Well the key to that here is a sketch and you look at the symmetries of the sketch. Here I had another one that's called this theta zero. That will simply be my other angle inverse. So this one here was theta one which led me to a uh, time one. And then I had theta zero which is the same number but negative minus 0 0.585 equals to uh, 0 0.1 t plus pi and then I will get a t0 which is equal to what will I get uh, minus 37 seconds. That's even worse than my first one. I even get more negative. So what about that one here? Let's call this theta 2. How do I get theta 2? If you look at the distance, well there are several ways of solving it. One of them is for example if you look here the link between my theta 0 and theta 2 is plus 2 pi rad if you're calculating in radians or 360 uh, degrees if you're calculating in degrees or if ever you're actually calculating in the time domain this will be plus 1 period. So the period here as an angle either in 2 pi rads or 360 degrees. So uh, what I could do is I can do okay my theta, well, this was theta naught, so this my theta 2 uh, would be my minus 0 0.585 plus 2 pi equals 0 0.1 t plus pi and then I solve this and I will get my third time is plus 26 seconds which will be my first positive answer so the answer to this problem. So before I mention something about the period if this is simple harmonic motion then we can calculate the period as being 2 pi over my angular frequency which is the 0 0.1 so 2 times 3.14 divided by 0 0.1 uh, that gives me uh, about 63 seconds. Now I could check according to my sketch here my result that I got from my second angle would be my uh, zeroth angle the one before plus 2 pi or for times the one period would be the 63 seconds. So is this uh, plus 63 seconds? And it is. So what was to be shown? Quad era demonstranda. So little rewrap. Uh, your calculator for cosine will, will only give you the one answer between 0 and pi rat or 180 degrees if you're in degrees. Uh, similarly the sine function For the sine function, your calculator will always just spit you out the answer between uh, minus pi half or 90 degrees and plus pi half and 90 degrees. And similar as we just did with the cosine, what you always have to do is make yourself a little sketch of this and figure out where are my other solutions. For example, here I had one, here I had one, and then use the symmetries uh, in your cosine or sine functions, uh, use that the function repeats itself at fixed intervals to figure out what are the other solutions and then you have to think which one is the solution that actually solves your problem.